All right, welcome back to our final lecture on the assumptions of the classical linear regression model. And we're going to talk about assumption six, which is that no explanatory variable is a perfect linear function of any other explanatory variables. If you do have this problem, we call it perfect multicollinearity. And the assumption can be shortened as saying, we're assuming you don't have perfect multicollinearity. Now what does this mean? Well, technically speaking, it means that you have two or more variables. Sometimes it can happen that it is three or four or five variables that can be written as a linear combination of each other. Now by a linear combination, we just mean the same kind of function we've been talking about, a linear equation. So how can you tell? Well, uh, one way is to just check the correlation of two or more variables, a multiple correlation, and if the correlation is equal to either positive one, you have perfect multicollinearity, or if the correlation is equal to minus one, exactly minus one, then you have perfect multicollinearity. So 0.99 is technically not perfect multicollinearity, that would be called imperfect multicollinearity. Now, multicollinearity uh, is a uh, word I guess we should talk about. Multicollinearity means that there are multiple variables who have a collinear relationship. And if it's perfect, that means that the, the two or sometimes more, three or four variables, have a perfect straight linear relationship with no, no scattering around the, the line. So that's what it means if you have a a correlation of exactly positive one or minus one. What's an example of, of how could this possibly happen? A few examples. Number one, uh, suppose you're trying to explain something like uh, electricity use and um, electricity use might be predicted with a, a y-intercept and a slope times uh, temperature in degrees Celsius, right? And someone might also say, well, what about another variable, B2, another slope, times the temperature in Fahrenheit? Well, this would be kind of silly because the degrees Celsius and the degrees Fahrenheit, they're, they're both the same thing, temperature, even though they're measured differently. Well, how can we show that they're a linear relationship? Well, you might have learned at some point if you want to convert between Fahrenheit and Celsius, then you can write degrees Fahrenheit equals nine-fifths times the degrees Celsius plus 32. And this is a linear equation where degrees Fahrenheit is equal to a slope, nine-fifths, times degrees Celsius plus 32. That would be the y-intercept. And it's a perfect linear relationship between the two. So what this assumption is saying is that you can't throw both of these variables, degrees Celsius and degrees Fahrenheit, into an equation because the information contained in one of these variables is identically contained in the information for the other. And so there's no mathematical technique that can tell you is it, which one of these is important? Is it degrees Fahrenheit or is it degrees Celsius? Well, it's kind of silly to ask that question because they contain the same information. Now, another way that this can happen sometimes is with dummy variables. With a, when you set up dummy variables, as we've seen this before, but we haven't explicitly talked about it. If you have two categories for a dummy variable, now we saw one earlier where we had a variable called domestic and that variable was equal to one for a domestic car and it's equal to zero uh, if the car is an import, right? Now there are two categories for cars when we set them up this way. Domestic is one category, import is another, but we only use one dummy variable to tell us which of two categories that a car would be into. Now, you might 
try to put in two variables, one called domestic, where it's equal to one if a car is domestic and zero if it's an import, and then you could try to throw in another variable called import, which is equal to one for an import, but it's equal to uh, zero for a domestic car, right? Now, so you'd have two variables in there for the two categories. You can't do that because it violates this perfect multicollinearity assumption. How, what's the relationship between these two? Well, you can r write the value for a domestic, uh, the domestic variable is equal to one minus the value of the import variable, right? Now you can also think about this as, well, these two variables contain exactly the same information. Uh, if it's a domestic car, we know it's not an import car. If it's an import car, we know it's not a domestic car. So these two variables are redundant. They contain, contain redundant information. Now, so keeping in mind that with dummy variables, you only need one variable to represent two categories, uh, we can extrapolate this in a similar fashion. If you have three or four or five categories, you need one fewer variable than categories. Now we saw this uh, in one of the papers we looked at before. I think we had something like uh, four regions of a country. Now let's, let's suppose we had four regions of a country. Uh, the northern region, the southern region, the eastern region, and the western region. In order to represent these four regions, north, south, east, and west, you only need three dummy variables. You actually can't use four. Why not? Well, if we have one dummy variable called north, another one called east, and another one called south, if you know that a, a, an observation is not from the northern region, that's equal to zero, and it's not from the southern region, that's equal to zero, and you know that it's not from the eastern region, well, you know where the observation came from. It has to have come from the western region. If you threw in a variable, a fourth variable for the four categories, where that would be equal to one, then you're going to have a situation where these variables are perfectly multicollinear. Let me show you what that equation could look like. Uh, the value of the north variable is equal to one minus the value of the south plus the east plus the west variable. So if it's in the west, the value of the north variable must be one minus zero, um, sorry, minus, minus, uh, one minus the value of the south, which is zero, minus the east, which is zero, minus the west, which is one, which tells us that the north must be zero. So this is why when you have, uh, say, n categories, you use n minus one dummy variables. You have to omit one of the categories, and we call that the reference category. So another problem that we'll talk about in, a, in an upcoming lecture is it's also a problem if you have highly correlated explanatory variables. It's not a violation of the assumption, but it can cause other problems. Specifically, what it will do is increase the standard error of your slope estimates. And we'll talk about that in a, an upcoming lecture about the standard error and what that means. Now, the last assumption is pretty simple. It's not required for the classical linear regression model, but it's kind of a bonus. So we call it the seventh assumption. And the seventh assumption is that the error term is normally distributed. So theoretically, the error term has a normal distribution we check this by looking at the distribution of the residuals th that we actually get to observe. Now, this is optional for ordinary least squares to be the best linear unbiased estimator. But if the residual is normally distributed, then ordinary least squares is not only the best linear unbiased estimator, it is the best of all possible methods. And so it's something that is, is important because it tells you that if your residual is not normally distributed, there might be a better method out there. Now, let me just mention that there's, there is a camp of theoretical 
and applied econometricians who take this not as an assumption but as a necessity for a different reason there are some who say and they have they have good reasons for for backing up this opinion so that if your residu residuals are not normally distributed that it's an indicator that there is something else seriously wrong with your regression uh, some say that it means that there must be a variable left out that should be in there or that your functional form is wrong and so I just wanted to to let you know that so classically it's it's not absolutely necessary but a lot of people do check and, and consider this an important assumption to at least check and see if the residuals have a normal distribution.